Hi, I'm Angie Kellen and this is Shot Talk with Aki Fujimura. Aki is the CEO of D2S and D2S is the managing company sponsor of the EVM Initiative. Hello Aki. Hi Angie. <laughs> well let's start off with PMJ. I know you were there in April, Photomass Japan. What were your key takeaways? Yeah, uh, PMJ great as usual and uh, in particular uh, the organizers uh, uh, decided to have a panel session based on uh, what Franklin Koch talked about uh, last year at the EV Initiative event at Vacas. Um, it's about uh, uh, the trading edge uh, machines making a comeback uh, in the mask industry. So um, very interesting. Um, uh, the uh, speaker from Applied Materials uh, talked about how they support their machines for 25 years. And, oh my gosh, you know, uh, 25 years ago, Google, the company, wasn't born yet, you know? <laughs> These are high-tech machines um, that are being supported for longer than Google's been around. That's pretty amazing. So um, obviously, uh, at some point, it's got to be ready to be uh, turned over. And uh, uh, what Franklin's saying is that uh, it's it's time now. Um, and uh, that's, uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, uh, clearly, uh, a great topic was uh, multi-beam. Um, multi-beam is um, uh, definitely ready to go. Um, and uh, uh, there was a, a discussion both by uh, New Flare. Part of it was talking about uh, New Flare's uh, digital twin, uh, uh, the simulator that simulates the uh, New Flare machine capability, and also by uh, IMS. IMS uh, talks now about the second generation machine, not just the first generation machine. So um, that's really clearly ready to go. Um, and obviously, uh, multi-beam is great for EV and for printing smaller features with uh, a slower resist, but uh, it's also uh, a, an enabler for curvilinear designs, um, curvilinear mask designs. Um, and uh, uh, iMac uh, talked about a curvilinear designs, not just mask designs, but the original designs like standard cells or memory cells um, being curvilinear inside. And, uh, so uh, that was really interesting. Uh, I completely agree that uh, uh, curvilinear designs are enabled by multi-beam and in fact also by EUV and the presence of uh, GPU acceleration uh, is also an enabler for that. So uh, I, I think the world is ready for that and there's a whole bunch of infrastructure that's missing still to be able to really do that, but it's an interesting discussion. Um, another thing that was interesting was that uh, there wasn't that much of uh, deep learning uh, discussion there. Uh, D2S talked about deep learning, and there were like one or two other papers, but uh, uh, it was a, a, a very sparse presence of deep learning, especially compared to uh, 28 of 290 papers at uh, SPIE Advanced Lithography only in February. Um, and we know that uh, at the Bacchus conference in uh, uh, September, uh, there will be a deep learning session, uh, so deep learning will be making a little bit more of a comeback. Um, but I think maybe uh, uh, it's in a transition time uh, uh, going from the initial excitement to more uh, a production-oriented usage. Um, so anyway, overall great, great conference. Well, it sounds like, uh, not to add a pun into the mix, that D2S is ahead of the curve, if you will. So, <laughs> yeah. adding to the more curved talk, I, we had heard that Ryan Perriman gave a really great presentation on curvilinear mass data. In fact, we'd asked him to redo that for us for our perspectives uh, piece in this, this series. So, Aki, what was, for those of us that haven't seen it, what's most compelling about his presentation? Yeah, so, um, basically what Ryan did was to study um, what the effects of having curvilinear mass data, that basically uh, OPC or IoT outputting curvilinear shapes, um, you, you know, how beneficial is that uh, to uh, wafer variability? And it's intuitively clear that it's better to draw something that can actually be manufactured, right? And everything that's manufacturable is curvilinear. Uh, everything actually manufactured either mask or wafer is actually curvilinear. So um, uh, it makes sense. But 
and how much is it significant? And, and so that's the question. So he did a Monte Carlo simulation, a, a double simulation of mask and wafer uh, simulations uh, to study uh, what is the impact, especially in the context of EUV uh, designs. Uh, and uh, what he found uh, was that uh, there is a 30% focus variability improvement um, by using curved linear designs um, as opposed to Manhattan designs. Um, so, uh, you know, curved linear designs being enabled by multi beam is, uh, uh, should have a uh, very strong impact on uh, 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 controlling the output on the wafer. Now, also in April, D2S announced a new product, True Mask DLK. And of course, DLK stands for Deep Learning Kit. Mm -hmm. um, what who is this designed for, and actually, what are the benefits for it? Yeah, so um, uh, the philosophy that D2S has about deep learning is that uh, uh, deep learning is about lots of data. And, and uh, uh, your data is precious to you. And just like what's happening in a social network area with Facebook and Google and all the problems, and uh, uh, data is very special. Data is very valuable. So we believe that uh, your company should keep your data to yourself and do deep learning yourself. So instead of saying that we want to do deep learning for you, what we're saying is that uh, we would like to provide a deep learning accelerator, if you will, so that you can do your deep learning earlier and, and better um, by using our deep learning kit. So we're providing all of the things that we've learned to, uh, to need, to, uh, that we need uh, to be able to do deep learning for ourselves and provide it in a form of a kit so that uh, uh, you can use it to accelerate learning. Now, in the announcement for TrueMass DLK, you talked about uh, partnering with ABEAM and Fast Litho. How does these partnerships work, and, and what is it that they're providing? Yeah, so as a part of this acceleration of ramp up of your uh, deep learning effort, um, one of the things that uh, you will need uh, is a, a rigorous simulator for mask making and also for wafer making so that uh, you have a very accurate source of data. Um, uh, it's very difficult to actually print something and take some pictures and even if you did, thousands of pictures is probably the best you can do and deep learning needs millions of data. So um, uh, particularly uh, with respect to abnormal data that you also need plenty of, um, you need a simulation capability to generate that data. Um, just like in autonomous driving, there's a simulation is a big, big field, it's a huge market. Uh, providing uh, driving simulation. Um, similarly, uh, in semiconductor manufacturing, uh, simulation uh, source of data is very important. And if you're going to use simulation as source of deep learning training data, you might as well be as accurate as possible, right? And um, uh, you want to use a rigorous simulator uh, where really the issue with rigorous simulators is that it's accurate, but it takes a long time, and uh, you can only do it for small areas at a time. Um, the benefit of using that for deep learning training is that you get accuracy. You only need the runtime for training data, so you can afford to take a long time for that. And then you get the benefit of that in inferencing, which happens very quickly, and you can apply it at the full chip level um, uh, uh, without the penalty. So you get the benefit of the accuracy. You lose a little accuracy in the deep learning process, but it's still a uh, very good capability. So um, we think that, that when you're trying to do deep learning yourself, rigorous simulators are an essential part of your effort. So we provide that as part of uh, the deep learning kit. Great. Well, now let's look at the near-term horizon. And I know all summer the eBeam Initiative is going to be working on their annual surveys. And, of course, we're looking forward to getting those reports and results, you know, in the fall in Monterey. Now, for you, though, you're going to be giving a presentation on July 9th. It's going to be part of the inaugural ES Design West Conference, which is going to be part of Semicon West San Francisco. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk about. 
Yeah, I'm going to be talking about digital twins, actually. Yeah, so uh, ES Design West uh, is a perfect forum. It's exactly where D2S sits um, between design and silicon, you know. Um, so uh, uh, well, we would like to talk about uh, uh, design for manufacturability uh, in a, with a little bit of a twist, you know, DFM has been talked about since the 1990s, but uh, uh, we think, or maybe even the 80s, right? Um, so, um, but uh, we think it's about time to actually look at digital twins of the manufacturing process and apply that in the uh, uh, in the design cycle to be able to predict better um, uh, what would be manufactured if you were to specify this as a design. So um, um, I'll be talking about digital twins. Digital twins, that's it. Well, Akimana, thank you so much for uh, your time today and sharing your insights, and we look forward to your paper in July. Thank you. I'd also like to encourage you to visit Ryan Pearman's Curvilinear Mass Data presentation. It's part of our prospectus piece in this edition of the Fine Line Video Journal. That's all for me. Hope to see you next time. <laughs>